The question on how to achieve decentralization has been a perennial concern for many organizations. The concept of distributed power has several appeals and can be appealed to all sorts of projects. In the context of energy, for example, decentralization can lead to more affordable energy because it allows communities to produce and utilize their own resources. It can also help increase innovation in the form of new businesses, which may benefit from the use of local resources. One of the primary benefits of decentralization is reduction of the number of players in a system. Because it is not controlled by one central authority, it reduces the likelihood of an explosive letdown. In order to achieve decentralization, a blockchain is used. This information base stores trade and resources over peer-to-peer -peer networks. A resource may be a product, ownership, or any type of digital asset. This means that blockchain doesn't copy its worth, but instead enlists credit movement. Another reason for using blockchain is decentralization of assets. This can be achieved by using a technology known as blockchain. This cutting edge technology allows users to send money to anyone in the world, despite the fact that it's it is centralized. As a result, Bitcoin has proven to be invincible. With no central control, it was impossible to be hacked and it is very, very tangible, um, not necessarily tangible, but very impenetrable. The biggest drawback to centralized systems is the lack of efficiency. There's no single point of failure which makes them more vulnerable to attack. By contrast, a decentralized system has no central authority and cannot be charged without a majority of its user's consent. The first example of a system without a central authority was Bitcoin, which was born in 2018 after the financial crisis. The Federal Reserve, in response to the financial crisis, introduced quantitative easing to help the economy recover. Decentralization is a key to the truly decentralized network. It is essential to create a decentralized system to avoid such problems. A centralized system will have a single point of failure and be vulnerable to attacks, and that is why Decentralized systems are a potential solution to that. A decentralized system will not require a central authority and will be much more secure. It will be essential to keep in mind that there is no single point of failure in a centralized, decentralized system. A, de a centralized system will have a point of failure. A decentralized system will not have a point of failure. A decentralized system is a way to eliminate centralized controls in an organization. This is important to protect consumers and also the overall health of an organization. A centralized system will be also less susceptible to attacks. This is why decentralization is beneficial for everyone in a business. There is no need for a central authority and the dispersed assets can be stored safely and with great peace that the likelihood of being hacked or scammed is diminished with a decentralized system. There is no central control in a decentralized system. Decentralized systems are more resilient than the two attacks since they have no central authority. As a result, they are more likely to be secure and resilient in that sense. Furthermore, centralized systems are more prone to conflicts of interest and single points of failure. Therefore, decentralized systems are often more secure. The technology behind decentralized systems are great. The internet is the blockchain. The blockchain is distributed being a network of computers that contain the information. The technology is not only decentralized, but it's also scalable. It's possible to implement a decentralized finance system using blockchains, DLTs, and P2P. The blockchain and its associated technology are the most important choice for achieving decentralization. A decentralized finance system removes the need for intermediaries and makes transactions easier. But this is a in industry with minimal oversight. The concept of decentralization is not merely an idea, but a necessity. The concept of decentralization has many potentials. It can be streamlined. It can also use its ability to minimize the risk of explosive letdown. The technology behind blockchain is called a blockchain. A blockchain is a library of trade shared between peers. It does not copy the value of a resource, but enlists credit movement. Ultimately, decentralization is a key to a more democratic society. How can I keep my cryptocurrency decentralized? This is a great question. If you are new to cryptocurrency, you might wonder how you can keep your cryptocurrency decentralized. The answer is not very complicated. First, you need to understand what centralization is and what the power is. This is what you will need if your plan is to use it for financial transactions. For example, if you own Bitcoin, it is a centralized entity. 
If a monopoly tries to take over the network, the money will be lost forever. This can be a security concern. Second, if you want to avoid government control, you should use a DEX. A DEX is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange where people can trade their cryptocurrencies without any intermediary. They can do this by transferring funds um, one to another, which makes the process more secure and efficient and effective. These exchanges are run by using code, which makes them much safer to use. Moreover, these exchanges do not present a large honeypot for hackers. Third, you should use a DEX. A DEX does not belong to a particular company or an organization. The software running the DEX enables peer-to-peer -peer crypto transactions. Popular DEX options include OneInch, DYDX, and Uniswap. A DEX does not have a central server. Its advantage is that it does not have a centralized server. Finally, you should look for a decentralized exchange. So keep in mind that when you're using a DEX, you're not going to be using a centralized server. But finally, you should look for a decentralized exchange. An exchange will allow you to trade your crypto directly without a third party. These exchanges typically do not require your personal information or a banking account number. They are great options if you're worried about privacy or security. However, there's a downside to this type of exchange. It's more difficult to control a centralized system. A DEX is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. That means that there is no single entity or company running a DEX. It allows you to make direct transactions without an intermediary. Instead of relying on a centralized exchange, DEXs are built to eliminate these risks and help users remain anonymous. This way, decentralized exchange is free of government control over your crypto assets. Decentralized exchanges are not centralized. Instead, they are owned and run by individual computers and organizations. The code on a DEX allows you to make peer-to-peer -peer transactions. A DEX can be as simple as Uniswap or SushiSwap. These are some popular choices, but a DEX is the best choice for you, usually. This type of exchange will not be centralized. While a DEX is not controlled by a single entity or organization, it does provide a way to transfer cryptocurrencies from one user to another. A DEX will not be centralized at all, but it will be a public blockchain. That means that it has no central authority. Hence, it is a good choice for cryptocurrencies that aren't centralized. The decentralized exchanges will only offer you the lowest prices and no fees. A DEX is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange. That means that you will not be giving your money to a centralized exchange. By choosing a DEX, you can keep your cryptocurrency indefinitely and anonymously. You'll be able to move it to any location you choose. There are also more security and privacy benefits to having a DEX. This type of wallet is not centralized. In addition, it is more private than a centralized wallet. In short, a DEX is a cryptocurrency exchange that does not have a central authority. This means that your transactions will be decentralized, but not governed over by the same entity as the exchange itself. This is a great benefit because it protects your private data. It keeps your information secure. You can be sure that it's safe. So keep in mind that a DEX is a good idea. A DEX is a decentralized exchange. Anyone can list a new token on a DEX, but this isn't always the most secure option. A DEX can be vulnerable to scams. You can be scammed into thinking that you're buying a different token because you're unaware of a fact. This is a dangerous scenario. The easiest way to protect yourself is to avoid scams and only use a DEX with an experienced user. So what's the promise of decentralization? We're going to dive in. So with a DEX, you're using with an experienced user, but we're going to dive further into the promise of decentralization. The promise of decentralization has long been a utopian idea, but it's been largely abandoned as powerful companies have come to dominate the internet. These companies have taken advantage of the conveniences of internet, but at the expense of privacy and user experience. However, the promise of decentralization may be found in solving these major milestones. This video will explain how decentralization works from here on out and what it entails, its potential, and how it derives from the promise that decentralization will eliminate centralized control. Whether it resists central control or supplants it, decentralization is a promising trend. It has been embraced by crypto utopians, politicians, activists, congressional representatives, and the list goes on. In the early days, it seemed like the perfect answer to inefficiencies of the state bureaucracy and political indecision. However, decentralization can be a dangerous mistake. The goal of decentralization should not be to displace existing institutions. In the long run, decentralization will increase the efficiency of government services and reduce the needs of intermediaries. Therefore, it's important to understand how decentralization works 
and why it might not be the best option for our future. This video will explore some of the issues related with decentralization. In the previous videos, we talked about the concept of decentralization and we explained the difference between centralization and decentralization. So when we dive in and discuss how the concept of decentralization can benefit society, we explain that decentralization can increase democratic freedom and how it can actually be a great way for individuals to take control. We concluded that decentralization can be a positive development. But the promise of decentralization is not just a good thing. It can be a very negative development. The idea of decentralization may be appealing or unappealing, but it's promising step forward for the entire world. The promise of decentralization is a positive development for humankind. The decentralized web would break up the enormous databases maintained by large internet companies. It would also ensure better privacy and security for users. In addition, it would allow for people to access their data from anywhere and any device. As a result, it could prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Its aim is to prevent the spread of diseases in the world. There are two types of decentralization, economic and political. Some forms of decentralization can resist and replace centralized control. For example, crypto utopians and congressional representatives have supported the notion of a decentralized society. This is an appealing solution to the efficiencies of the state bureaucracies and uncertain surroundings of political action. So when we look into decentralization, you have to keep in mind the political aspect. Now, the promise of decentralization can lead to a democratic world without the threat of tyranny. The promise of decentralization is a positive development that is a step backwards from the current centralized model. This model aims to reduce the number of centralized organizations and increase the number of decentralized functions. The goal of decentralization must be a cus a cus acquired and paired by substantial increase in human and financial resources. The goal of the reform must be realistic and it must be a win-win scenario for all the stakeholders. Moreover, the benefits of decentralization are widely applicable. Although the technology advancements that have emerged from decentralizations are exciting, they have significant downsides. As a result, these technologies will require huge investments in both human and financial resources. The key challenge to overcome the inherent weaknesses of existing systems. The promise of decentralization is a valuable innovation. While the technology is a new model, it is already an excellent solution for a decentralized econ economy. There are many benefits of decentralization. For one, it increases the number of consumers, which is a benefit. This is a major advantage. It also creates jobs. With a global economy, businesses and individuals can benefit from this method. For instance, you can offer a wide range of services, including healthcare. The benefits of decentralization are not just limited to economic aspects, of the economy, but also to the environment. The promise of decentralization has been a major challenge for many governments. In many places, the central government does not deliver an adequate level of services to all of its citizens. Some services such as healthcare and education are only available to residents of the major cities. Other parts of the country are largely untouched by a central government agency. Consequently, consequently effective, ineffective, and effective decentralizations is critical for the provision of services. In these cases, it's possible to get local governments to provide the necessary services. So finally, let's talk about the role of the internet protocols in decentralization. So internet protocols have played a key role in decentralization since the early years of the ARPA net, a network that was made up of researchers at Stanford, UCLA, and other universities, the internet has become increasingly interconnected and powerful. The development of decentralized networks enabled these institutions to collaborate and share information. Today, this is still the case. For instance, if you want to work with a friend who works at another university, you can easily send them a message using your computer. Despite all these improvements, decentralization still has its drawbacks. While some decentralized networks are thriving, in this day and age, many others are not. In fact, some of them have been disrupted by the growth and disrupted by the large tech companies. In fact, some networks are thriving because they use a combination of decentralization and standardized technologies to avoid centralization. These networks are based on open standards and use encryption to data, say, uh, data sensitive information. Why decentralization is a great idea? There are significant challenges. Among these challenges is the issue of mass adoption. Although decentralization is more efficient, there are still a lot of problems to be solved. 
major hurdle in the centralization is overcoming security concerns. For example, there is a lack of universal infrastructure, which will make it difficult to spread the system. That means that it takes longer than expected to bring widespread adoption. Why decentralization may be a way forward for the internet development? The debate over the future of the internet cannot ignore the fact that it is not entirely without its risk. While the benefits are undeniable, it will not be as seamless as most people think. The main obstacle is the need for an increased transparency and openness in the public realm. There are many risks involved and the decentralized system will still be subject to the problems. In addition to security and mass adoption, the decentralized debate has several other issues. The current infrastructure of the internet is dominated by a few companies. The emergence of decentralized networks would lead to increased privacy. However, it can cause more problems than benefits. For instance, there are several problems in mass adoption. In contrast, a centralized system would be slow and vulnerable to attack. If you're looking for a decentralized system, it would be much simpler internet protocol and development and can be a key factor in decentralization. In addition to security, the decentralized internet can also face a variety of other issues. In particular, a centralized system suffocates competition and destroys individuals' privacy. Unlike a more democratic, decentralized network, no hosting company has control over its contents of its data. As a result, it's more difficult to maintain a centralized system. The concept of a decentralized web would break down the immersed database possessed by internet companies and help users protect themselves from surveillance. A decentralized system harks back to the original idea behind the internet when a centralized system made communications more vulnerable. It could also allow people to browse the world without worrying about their privacy. And with no central power, it can also be used for business purposes. While the centralized internet was created to increase efficiency, it is a far cry from the completely decentralized system. In fact, a decentralized network can improve productivity and performance. It is a way to reduce user footprints and also less prone to attacks and hacker intrusion. The role of internet protocols in this movement is critical. These networks help users browse the web anonymously and limit their personal footprints. As the decentralization of the internet grows, it is crucial to ensure what remains secure. While a centralized system is not idea, it is necessary to protect human privacy. The role of the internet protocols is essential in a decentralized network though. For example, a centralized system should be able to preserve relevant information for humanity. Nonetheless, a decentralized system is still susceptible to problems, including latency. So I hope that has been helpful information on decentralization, a thorough breakdown, and help you with understanding the process. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We will be back with more videos. Be well, and see you soon.